Awesome. So we are live here today with episode 21 of the Blue Crocus Experience. And I'm joined with uh, joined by Bobby Walker of Journey of a New Entrepreneur. He has a YouTube channel and a podcast. And he's also a fellow business owner uh, running a pressure washing business out of Orlando, Florida. So, I mean, really to just get this rolling, tell us a bit about your story. You were telling me a bit off air of yeah. kind of how you got into the into the business, but maybe dive into that and then we can we can roll from there yeah all right well Lewis like I said uh right before we started recording I'm a big big talker you've got a you've got your work cut out for you on this one so just shut me off as I'm going um I'll just kind of yeah so I'll, I'll just uh we'll just kind of start from the beginning here so um first off just on my personal life uh I'm almost 42 as a matter of fact in uh three days i'll be 42 happy I, uh, advanced birthday thank you very much i uh, got my wife and i will have our I, th I think it's our 43rd 43rd 23rd anniversary somewhere between 20 and 23 years uh up in november you know so i've been married for married my high school sweetheart got three kiddos got a 17 year old boy 18 year old daughter and a next month 21 year old son so um so when this comes out you will have already uh rolled it rolled around the sun but. yeah yeah <laughs> and uh so you know just kind of doing that thing got two dogs you know so just kind of that that nucleus or nuclear family you know here in the u.s and and um really love that uh like almost every person on the planet you know my passion is my family you know so i love doing fun stuff with my family, fun stuff with my friends. So nothing. Yeah, I, I definitely see that come through on your Facebook. It's been fun to see. Oh, okay. I yeah. saw you guys doing the, uh, what was it? The office? Was it something from the oh, office? The office. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that was pretty funny. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. We're actually all huge office fans. And, uh, the, um, as a matter of fact, a day doesn't go by at our house without probably at least 10 office references, you know, so it's That's just so good. Kind of That's awesome. Thing. I took a pilgrimage to Scranton, Pennsylvania, um, a little over a year ago. So that was kind of cool. For those of you that don't know, that's where, uh, you know, the fictitious uh, Dunder Mifflin from the office uh, was located. So went there and kind of did that. That was, it kind of sucked, but it was really awesome all at the same time, you know, <laughs> Scranton, Scranton is just like gray and depressing, but, but it was still a lot of fun. And, um, but yeah, you know, so I'm doing the life thing. I'm, I'm at a stage in life where I'm trying to get more hobbies and shit, shit stuff, stuff. Yep. I said yeah. I was trying not to cuss. And, oh, um, but anyway, doing that, uh, probably nothing real interesting in my, in my life there. Okay. Now I, uh, I grew up real poor minded, you know, I didn't go to college, uh, and, and I'm poor minded, you know, being poor as a mentality at small town, Oklahoma, um, thought that you'd have to, um, you know, that other people were kind of in control of your success or your d destiny in, in your professional world. Um, I just had a bunch of J-O-Bs. Uh, I actually had a stint in full-time ministry. It's a long story that we can have over a beer sometime. Uh, nothing <laughs> bad. It's just, I'm not anymore. I'll just put it that way. Uh, no moral failures, just for the record. And yeah. um, that, that got me out of it, but uh, not doing that anymore. And I just had some J-O-Bs and kind of right place at the right time, uh, both in my life, you know, the kind of that quarter life crisis that a lot of us have, you know, right around the time we're turning 30 thinking, Oh my God, I'm not going to live forever. Uh, I'm going to work till the day I die. And you know, one of those things. And, uh, at the same time got around some people that positively influenced me. One of them's my best friend to this day, uh, who was a coworker and a trainer at this job I got with a security company. Another one was the owner of this security company, a little mom pop place. And that was, uh, when I kind of started thinking, Oh my gosh, I can do something with my life. And, and, uh, that owner, that company kind of mentored me a little bit and then they sold to a corporation and I got a management spot. And so I'd experienced as a technician and as a salesperson and then ops and sales manager and ended up being the vice president and general manager of the Oklahoma region, which is I'm from Oklahoma originally. Um, and I went from making 11 bucks an hour as a forklift operator to making about $150,000 a year as the VP GM of Oklahoma in about six years. And it was really wow. weird. It was like this wow. whirlwind. Everyone that knew me was like, what the hell happened to you, Bob? Like why, you know, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but some, something did. Yeah. So anyway, I was doing that. And at that point I was like, oh, I'm going to climb the corporate ladder and this is going to be awesome. And I was loving my job. And this was with the security company that kind of morphed into it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. With the security company. And, and I, I loved it. I loved the company I worked for, the leadership. And um, I thought I wanted to climb that corporate ladder. And, and I think within that industry, I had the opportunity to do so. 
a couple of mergers happened. Um, along with those mergers came a lot of anxiety and stress and, and frankly, pure hatred of my job. And um, bounced around the comp- uh, country a little bit. I started out, like I said, in Oklahoma, transferred to South Florida, then I transferred to um, Virginia. And then I chose to come back to Florida. My family wanted to live here. So we moved back on our own dime. I took a job in sales within that company because they didn't have any management stuff for me here. Um, got here, spent my last dime getting here because I was foolish with my money and didn't have anything in the bank. And uh, about eight months after I got here, I got a phone call that I was losing my job. Now that's the short version of the story, but you know, another merger had happened and, and my position was going to get eliminated. I, I, Here's a crazy thing. I'm trying not to talk too much, but no, now, we'll get, now we'll get into you know, this kind of entrepreneur frames, thing. Kind of frames where you come from, right? And I think that's yeah. so important. Well, so here's what's cool. I, I wasn't loving my job, like I had said. I got to the point where I wasn't working hard. I was in sales, but I I just really hated I hated the company, to be honest with you. And and I'm not and I'm the kind of guy that's always said, Well, if you hate it, you need to go somewhere else. And I was like, Okay, I know I knew I needed to do something different. So I was thinking of starting a service business on the side because I knew how to run service businesses because that's what security companies are. And I had ran some pretty big areas, locations. And uh, so I was looking, talking to my wife about wanting to do something on the weekends, make it my full-time gig. She was really scared. You know, she's like, well, as long as it's the weekends and you keep the check coming and all that good stuff. My son, who was a senior in high school at the time, heard me talking about it to mom nonstop. And this was like in November and he approached me and said, not this past November, but you know, three, three ish years ago. And, uh, he said, dad, I want to do that with you. And I kind of tried to talk him out of it. Not because I didn't want him to, but because I explained to him, it's not all fun and games. And, and he said, no, I want to do it. So we were thinking about maybe starting a carpet cleaning company. Why? I don't know. We just kind of thought, Hey, we'll do a carpet cleaning company. And, uh, so I started doing a lot of research and I was kind of dragging my feet and January rolled around and I got that phone call finding out that I was going to lose my job. And about four hours before I got that phone call, I stumbled across a video on YouTube. Some dude who's actually become a friend of mine. His name is Keith Kalfas, and he's got a pretty big YouTube channel. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you know Keith or not, but super cool dude. Just a solid, solid guy. And he has this video that says how to start a window cleaning company with no money. I thought, well, that's interesting. I'm not going to start a window cleaning company, but I'll watch it. So I click on the video. He's like, "Here, here I am at Home Depot or Lowe's. I forget which one. He walks in, he goes, go to this aisle. He goes, buy this, 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 and this. He, about 40 bucks or so of stuff. He walked out front and he goes, a window like that, charge this much for it. He goes, there you go, go start a window cleaning company. So my son happened to walk by like right after I watched this video, a 10 minute video. And I said, Caleb, watch this. I said, now listen, we're not gonna start a window cleaning company because frankly, window cleaning is beneath me. That was my thought, you know? And, um, but it's still a cool concept. And I said these words, I said, if I were to lose my job tomorrow, that's what I'd go do to pay the bills. No way. Shit, shit you not. Four hours later, that's crazy. I get a phone call finding out I'm going to lose my job. They were so, listening. They were listening. Your room yeah, was right? <laughs> so, I'm laying in bed that, you know, just, just scared out of my mind. Cause like I said, I had no money. I mean, I had less than $2,000 to my name. You know what I mean? I was just living paycheck to paycheck cause I was foolish. And then when I came here, I took a pay cut and all that good stuff. And, um, living paycheck to paycheck. And the, uh, um, I'm laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, just freaking scared. I'm, I'm reading everything I can. And then I'm trying to go to sleep. Can't go to sleep. I was probably staring at the ceiling till 1 AM woke up the next day, drove to home Depot with my son. Uh, I think we went when he got out of school, we drove to home Depot. Um, we spent about 120 bucks. I pulled that video up that, that we watched. We bought yeah. basically two of everything and a couple of extras. And, um, and during the day before, he, while he was at school, I went to Office Depot and bought some of those per- perforated business cards, you know, and made some of those up at the house, printed those off, ordered some on Vistaprint so they'd get here in about a week. And, and the next morning after that, we just started eight o'clock. We were out cold calling on businesses and, you know, like in person, I, I say cold calling, but, you know, out door knocking, knocking on doors. Yeah. And um, we I, basically, I was knocking on doors from uh, about eight o'clock till five o'clock every day, ha- not having a crap ton of success. Uh, quickly within that first month transitioned over to going after residential work, doing window cleaning only. And, um, you know, like month number one, we did like five, five grand in revenue. Month number two, we did almost 10. And then month number three was like five again. And then month number four was 10 again. And then we took a big dump in, in the next month and made almost nothing. And 
then we got really, really focused and, uh, you know, we just finished year number three, you know, back in December, uh, we had done a million dollars total in those first three years. So, com you know, combined the, the year number three, we did right up half a million. And um, the uh, goal for this year, which is year number four, uh, the goal was to do a million in total revenue, top line revenue. Um, we came into uh, the year just killing it. January and February, we were just way ahead of schedule. March, um, around March 12th or 13th, we were pacing to have our first ever $100,000 a month. Wow. And then the coronavirus thing hit and we, I gained an additional $2,000 in revenue in that month. So we, around the 13th, we had about 48 grand on the books for that month. And I think we finished the month with 50 K total, you know, so cr the That's coronavirus amazing. thing, well, well, it, the coronavirus oh, oh, really oh you like, so it stopped the second half of the month was nothing. Yeah. Okay. Was, yeah, okay. Was, I thought you were saying you like topped out over. No, and then no, I was no, like, no, no. Just, no. Okay. Okay. I'm with no, you. it was not awesome. It was terrible. Yeah. And then, uh, so we limped along through the coronavirus thing, which we're still feeling the effects of, so we're coming back out of it. So now I'm behind. We're we're ahead of where we were last year. We're about 25 to 27 percent over where we were last year, okay. year to date. But we're way behind our our goal for this year. So it's going to be difficult for us to get to that million dollars. I'm still going to try to make it up and and see if we can do that here in the second half of the year. But uh, that's that. Um, and then, so that's kind of the story of what we're doing there. My. Uh, and I've caught the bug, you know, I've, I'm doing what I was made to do. I'm, I'm enjoying the business despite the stress and fear and anxiety and sleepless nights and all that stuff that comes with it. Wondering if you're going to make payroll the next week, you know, and all that good stuff, but I love it. I love building something like this. Uh, my wife who she was too scared for me to start something on weekends, you know, just a few years ago, she actually quit her job over front on a Friday. She's like, I think I'm going to quit Monday. She put in her notice she started a, a maid service uh, about six months ago and she's been owner operator. My daughter started that with her and they're about to start hiring for their first crew to start helping because they're getting that capacity there and they're trying to scale that thing. Wow. That's cool. And my son, who's my partner in this company just told me dad, I think I might quit on you. Just take my distributions and start a Christmas light hanging company. So, so you're uh, just a pack of serial entrepreneurs here. Well, we're, we're, we're kind of becoming that, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I you, have, you have three kids, right? So where's, where's yeah. the, uh, what's the other one up to? He actually just walked in the door. He's my youngest. He, uh, so he's still in high school and he's doing like the, the fast food thing. You know, I, I don't force the kids to do anything, you know, as far as entrepreneur stuff, like I encourage them to do so because you don't whip them out of bed every morning to go pressure wash for yeah, a few hours. No. Well, cause here's the thing. It's very rewarding from a financial aspect. And I'm like, if your ass is lazy, I'm not going to drag you out and make you do it. So if you want to yeah. do it, you got to do it. And so, but, but anyway, I'm, uh, he's, he'll be a senior this upcoming school year and, and he's, he's pretty legit too. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Talk to me, uh, talk to me about the, the evening. The, what do you, talk to me about the moment that I guess that you told your wife, like, what are you thinking when you get the call? Cause I actually had that happen to me last year. Um, and I'm interested to hear yours. I can share a bit about mine, but I know for me it was, it was, uh, it was kind of surreal. I, I had a 20 minute drive home and I just, uh, I walked in, I told her I was coming home. It was like half an hour earlier, early, earlier than I normally did. Came home and she was really excited to see me. And I was just like, she was like, Whoa, like what, what's wrong. Right. And yeah. I just, and I, I just broke down because I was like, I, I had just graduated university um, uh, as a mature student and, and was kind of doing this job. And now we had a baby, like our baby was like eight, a month old. And I was like, all right, like, it's on me to like support this family. Right. So it was, it was, there was a lot of fear for me. Um, yeah. it, there was a bit of relief too, because the job that I was at wasn't really a great fit anyway. Um, so I was kind of like flip flopping between like, Oh yeah, this is awesome. And like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so yeah. So talk, talk to me a bit about your experience there, because I know that, you know, people are scared of making the jump, but when it gets yeah. jumped on you. Yeah. Well, I don't really remember like, when I said, Hey, guess what? I just found out because I was at home. She was at home. So I got the call. She's like basically listening to it while it's happening. And I actually, I found out before I was supposed to, because like I said, I was in management, you know, I was at that VP level, um, before. And then I, I literally to come back to Florida, I had to take a sales position. So I wasn't in that circle anymore, but my best friend, the one that I'd mentioned, that was my trainer. He, we used to crawl through attics installing security systems. Well, now he and I had both kind of moved up through the, through the ranks. So he called me and he's like, Hey man, 
don't tell anyone I told you, but an email just came out and uh, I looked, opened up the spreadsheet, checked on the Orlando tab and your name's on there. And I'm like, well, awesome. So I remember, right. you know, I just shared it with my wife and we, we were both scared. You know, we had pits in our stomachs and I said to her, I said, well, listen, I said, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I said, we were talking about starting this thing on the side. I'm just going to run with uh, starting a business and which she didn't like to hear at all at that time. And I want to be clear, like my wife's awesome. She's very supportive of me, but she was, she was just really scared. You know, I was scared, but she was scared of starting the business because we, there's this myth that we all believe that there's more security working for someone than there is on your own. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, we just, we're kind of through this coronavirus thing. There's no security in the working for someone else either. So anyway, um, I told her that and she was like, well, you know, but what about money? I said, tell you what, here's the deal. I'm going to do this. Give me about two weeks. If, if I can't do it, I'm going to keep trying, but I'll get a night job. So I'll work nights so we can at least keep food on the table and, and roof overhead. But I was so burnt out and frustrated over uh, my corporate career. I didn't want to get, I didn't want to call a recruiter and get back into it. Cause I, I just hated it. I was so, so, you know, so, so unhappy with that. So she was, so she trusted and, me. And you were on a good track too. Well, I mean, I know you're kind of taking the pay cut to come forward, but like you were, yeah. you were in one of the, the good corporate jobs that everyone dreams yeah. of, right? Well, and I was, the fact is I, the plan was I was going to be, uh, you know, probably taking over a branch, you know, down here in Florida in the near future from that, but it was just, they didn't have anything at that time. And then this other merger happened. Yeah. So, so we had good stuff and I could have went and got a job. I could have got a, a good, you know, maybe not 150 K, but I could have went and got another job making hundred K right out of the bat. Um, you know, doing that, but I just didn't want to. And so, like I said, so then we go back to the story I told at the beginning, we drove to Lowe's or home Depot. I forget which one spent about 120 ish dollars. And, and, um, and here I am today, three plus years later, uh, happy. And I don't pay, I'm not paying myself as much as I was making before just yet. Cause we're like an aggressive growth mode with the business. So, um, I, I pay myself $55,000 right now a year and I don't take any other money. Uh, the company pays for my car, you know, so I get it right. you know, in my phone and stuff, but I don't take any other money out of the company. Uh, we're putting it all right back in it. But um, next year, um, based on projections that I think are very realistic, I'll start, uh, start getting a little extra cash. Who knows? I might be driving a Tesla next year. We'll just see. So, That's awesome. That's awesome. So what happened at the end of the two weeks? Obviously you didn't go and get the night job. Yeah, no. So actually it worked out really well. So um, I don't know how familiar you are with my industry. So I'll just pretend like you're not. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, there's, so a lot of, I've interviewed people from Asphalt Tree. Um, I'm, yeah. This is also an opportunity for me to learn more about it. So cool. play, out, yeah. play it on me. So like I said, we started out with a window cleaning business. Now today we were a pressure washing company that happens to do some window cleaning. Okay. So, but, mm -hmm. but at the beginning it was pure window cleaning. And the reason people pick a company like window cleaning or to a lesser degree, but uh, pressure washing as well as there's a low barrier to entry. I started a company for a hundred bucks, you know, 120, whatever. And, uh, but like pre even a pressure washing company, if you have a truck already, you can start a pressure washing company for a couple thousand dollars too, you know, so it doesn't cost a lot of money. So, um, so we have our window cleaning tools. We're just hitting the pavement, just literally just walking into store after store after store and then um, ran into someone that uh, said, well, we don't need it here, but the guy that owns this building just bought a new house. He's my boss. And uh, he, he just said he needed a window cleaner. And I'm like, okay. And so the next day I went out to meet him at that. He, he was like, it's a big house. And I said, oh, it's cool. We actually specialize in, in large luxury homes. I'd never cleaned windows in a house in my life. Yeah. Not even my own, never. And he goes, well, no, it's really big. And I'm like, no, it's cool. We, we have the proper tools to do it. No, we didn't. And he, uh, he goes, you don't understand. This is huge. And I'm like, don't worry about it. We've got you covered. So I, go <laughs> the estate, right? I meet that guy and the estate manager for the guy that owns the building. All right. And uh, it was a 20,000 square foot house. And yeah. I'm not exaggerating. Not, I'm like, if you looked it up on Zillow, it's a 20,000 square foot house. It just, he just bought it for $11.8 million. Okay. 11 point something. I forget. It was almost 12 million bucks. He had just bought it. So I get there and I'm like, Oh my God, what did I get myself into? I do a walkthrough with the customer. I throw some numbers together. I called someone that knew someone that, and they said, charge this much for a window like that. And I'm like, okay. So I put this quote together 
um, gave it to them. She called me back like two days later on a Sunday and she goes, good news. They want to do it. And I'm like, awesome. She goes, can you have it done by Saturday? And I'm like, sure, sure. No problem. So Monday yep. morning I'm on the phone with like a supplier buying some real <laughs> window cleaning tools, having them overnighted. Um, the, uh, as a matter of fact, all the stuff that we bought to be able to do it came in on Wednesday afternoon. So my son and I, we get home, it's dark by the time we get home on Wednesday, we're starting the job on Thursday. We're unboxing the water fed pole, pure water system. We're unboxing everything, literally hooking stuff up, seeing if we can get it to work. We'd have no idea how we're going to use this stuff. And, uh, the next morning we went out, we spent two and a half days on this job. Uh, it's still a customer to this day where they get their windows cleaned by us uh, every quarter. So and now I'll, I'll send two technicians out now to do that job. And it takes us, uh, takes them about six hours. It took us two and a half days the first time. <laughs> did you tell, did you ever tell them the story? Of, of all no, I've they're... never told her that. I've never told them the story. I probably <laughs> will one day, but not yet. So that's awesome. We'll, we'll make sure she, uh, she doesn't yeah. run into this podcast. And, and then that, that made us kind of transition over to Resi because we realized, you know, like route work would be like storefronts and stuff. Those are great because um, you can, because they're reoccurring, you know, yep. so some, almost like a security company is that reoccurring monthly revenue the uh, problem is there's no big money up front yep. so you have to have a lot of route density and a lot of accounts in one place so we switched over to residential work where we could get you know big big tickets in our industry you know so we started doing window cleaning and we could get anywhere from two to six hundred dollars on a window cleaning job you know to, unless it's twenty thousand square feet then we get a much much bigger ticket yeah yep. and um Started doing that. So, uh, so it, it, like I said, the year, uh, month number one, we did about 5k in revenue. It really wasn't 5,000 wasn't enough that I needed in a month, but it kept the lights on and the food on the table. And, and when you're cleaning windows and it's just you and your son, you know, you keep almost all that money, you know, yep. you, you keep most of it. And, and, uh, so we just kind of took off. And I remember in month number two, we had no idea what the hell we were doing. We didn't know what was successful, what was not successful. So we hit, it was like, I think it was $9,800 in month number two. And I remember posting on a Facebook group uh, that had a lot of window cleaners in it. And I said, all right, guys, listen, I'm a little confused. I'm not sure what I need to be working on in my business. I'm in month number two. I just did $10,000 this month. And I'm like, what do I need to be working on? And I had guys post on there. How the hell did you do 10K in your second month? I've been doing this for 10 years and couldn't do it. And I remember thinking, how can you be doing this? For, I'm like, all I'm doing is knocking on doors, man. All, yeah, and I don't, yeah. I'm not even a good door knocker. You know, we're just doing this stuff. So you had your back against the wall though, right? Yeah. I had no choice. Right. It was, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't think my, I think had I started the business on the weekends and kept my day job, I don't think I would have had success because yeah. I, I was comfortable. You weren't desperate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. I, but I had to, I knew that if I didn't wake up, go kill it, drag it home, we weren't eating. So, so what, I mean, taking kind of all of that as, as a preface, what would you say to someone who is looking to start a company um, in, in anything? I mean, there's, there's different things. There's, uh, I've talked to a line striper on the podcast. Uh, there's other things that aren't like huge, huge barriers to entry. Um, but what would you say is kind of the, the one or two things possible? One obviously thing. Being one, thing. one thing. Don't be a bitch. Just get out there and do it. Don't be a bitch. So, um, so like on my podcast and YouTube channel, uh, we've kind of dubbed it the no bitch zone. And um, basically what I've defined as a bitch is someone that will blame other people for their lack of success yep. or outside sources for their lack of success or someone that won't pursue their dreams because of uh, their own. Scared. So people that won't pursue, pursue their dreams because of what other people may say, think or do or themselves and someone that blames others for that. And what I mean is this, I hear people all the time because I get people that reach out to me all the time now, you know, Hey, how did you do this? How did you do that? And, and, um, and I'll say, well, if you want X, you know, Google reviews, we've got almost 500 Google reviews. How are you yep. getting so many Google reviews, Bob? Well, we're getting them by doing this. Well, that doesn't work in my area. Bull crap. It doesn't work. Yeah. Out. Have you done it? Yeah, Just ask people. You got to ask people. people for suck, you suck, you know? And, and, and so I'm not trying to be like mean or harsh, but the fact is we, we, um, we've got to stop letting outside um, influences be our reason for lack of success. You have to look in the mirror every day, multiple times a day, and then be honest when you, when you see it. Be honest with what you see there. If you're fat, don't say, well, I'm just big boned. And if you're lazy, don't say, well, you know, life is hard. No, life's hard for everyone. I'm lazy. 
I'm a, I'm a lazy bitch and that stops today and, and you got to do it. Of course, there's strategy behind it. Of course, there's things you need to do. But I didn't know the strategies at the beginning. You know, I didn't know all that stuff. We, we just, you know, our effort overcame our um, lack of knowledge. And then as time goes by, you start adding some strategy to that, that, that makes you a lot more efficient and effective. I love it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle around to your YouTube and, and podcast here. Uh, but you, one of my favorite quotes is uh, imperfect action beats perfect inaction every time, right? Like yeah, I get love out that. there and do something, mm-hmm. you know, do something, fail at it, figure out that it doesn't work. Don't sit, um, you know, obviously research is good. You were watching the, the videos and came across that one mm-hmm. that kind of got you started. But um, I always tell people, and, and I have to tell myself this uh, as well, um, do something, try method. And then if it doesn't work, pivot and, and try something else, yeah. but do something, do it hard, make it fail or make it, make it succeed. And then, yes. Well, you just said it. I think the, the one thing, I think this is what you're saying, but like, if I was to, if I can take the, yeah, word it better. better. Yeah. You know, it's the whole Yoda thing. You don't, you know, we don't try it. You know, you do or you do not, there is no try, right. You know, yeah. Yoda from star Wars. Now, my my strategy has been because I've failed at a bunch of things, you know, like marketing methods and stuff like that is um, saying, I'm not going to try this. I'm going to either see if it works or prove that it doesn't yep. and um, proving that it doesn't work is, you know, like say flyers. We, you know, we built our little bitty pressure washing company. We were doing $20,000 a month from flyers only. Yep. So I said I was knocking on doors. I did on commercial, on residential. We didn't door knock. We just passed out flyers. Um, people will say, well, flyers don't work. Well, you're wrong. They do, and they work today, and they work where you live. Yep. And, and well, Bob, they, we have a lot of HOA communities, not as many as I do in Orlando. So, no, no, they work, and they work where you live. But my strategy has always been, well, if they don't work, I'm going to find out, and I'm going to be the expert on letting you know how and why they don't work. And that goes back to the don't be a bitch thing. Don't be someone that says, well, you don't understand my market's different. Your market's not different. Yeah, exactly. Your market's not different. Um, there's people, you know, people will tell me, Bob, I can't get Google reviews like you're saying, that no one leaves Google reviews in my area. I literally have people say that. And I'm like, where do you live? And they'll tell me. And then I'll just Google, you know, home service, whatever in their area. And what do you know? There's companies there with reviews all of a sudden, yeah. you know, so you want to drop a, a value bomb there for, for listeners on, on Google reviews. Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll give you, okay. So there's two things I'll actually share, um, a little bit of a script that we use, but there's more to it than just this. Okay. So I'm going to, so listener right now, you know, close your eyes, imagine your customer life cycle. Okay. So from the moment someone sees your ad, and then, you know, you got a little flow chart, they see your ad, then they call you and then your admin talks to them and then your sales rep goes out and visits them and then your technician goes out and does the work and then you have your follow up phone call and your postcards and your emails and all, you know, you got this whole customer life cycle thing going on, right? Every step along the way with the initial step, you have to have all of your, you know, like your purpose or what you're trying to achieve you need to be setting that up every step of the way. So if you only do what I'm about to share with you, like on Google reviews, for instance, you will have success, but you won't have as much success as we're having. If you don't like build your whole customer life cycle around it. the whole symbiosis that supports each yeah. step of the journey. Yeah. So I, I can't give you the whole customer life cycle thing, but I can give you the review thing. It's real simple. Uh, first off um, we got a script. So as a sales rep goes out and closes the deal, so, so Lewis, let's just pretend that it's you. Okay. All right, Lewis. So awesome. We've got you down for the roof and the house and the, the back patio. And we're going to be out. We said next Thursday at eight. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, Bob. Okay. Awesome. Well, listen, um, the technician is going to text you when he's in route. We'll send you, give you a phone call the day before just to remind you. And I'm going to get in my way. But, um, real quick though, before I leave, I just want you to know a couple things. First off, we are a family owned business and Lewis, I know this sounds cheesy, but when people like you hire us, you're literally helping us build our dreams and we really appreciate it. So thank you for that. And I want you to know that we have two goals every time we do work for somebody. Goal number one is to do such a good job on the cleaning and I'll kind of like point at their house. Goal number one is to do such a good job on the cleaning that we earn a uh, five-star Google review from you. And goal number two is just to make your experience so great from start to finish that you're going to tell all your friends and neighbors how great it is. 
So we're going to work really, really hard to earn both of those things. And we appreciate the opportunity to do so. That's so, already in their minds. Yeah. So that's, that happens when the sales guy sells a job, when the technician shows up to um, do the work, he's got, you know, we got a script that they use when they get there and a script that they use when they leave. Well, when they show up, they're going to say, okay, you know, Hey Lewis, all right. So we're here and we've got uh, the roof and the house and the thing in the back. Right. And you're like, yep, that's good. Okay. I'm going to get busy. It's going to take me about this long. Probably I'll do a walkthrough with you before I'm done. Okay, great. Just let me know. Okay. Uh, hey, Lewis, uh, you know, Mr. Jones, whatever. Um, hey, real quick. Uh, I just want you to know that I have two goals today while I'm doing work for you. Goal number one is to do such a good job cleaning that we are in a five-star Google review from you. And goal number two is to make your experience so great start to finish that you'll tell your friends and neighbors how great it was. So I'm going to work real hard to earn those from you today. Now you might say, Bob, you just said the exact same thing to him a second time. Yes. Yes, we did. Um, it's very, and as a matter of fact, people will smirk and smile whenever they hear that because they've already heard it once. Yep. When I was owner operator doing everything, I said it when I sold it. And I also said it again when I came out to clean. Okay. Nice. So, nice. so we did it twice. When the job's done, you pack up, you do the, you know, you do the walkthrough, you pack up, you collect payment. The last thing we do before we leave is to say, uh, hey, Mr. Jones, is it okay if I shoot you a text message um, with the link to leave us a Google review? And they're like, sure, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to do that right now. They pull their phone out. We use this service called Nice Job. It just it helps automate this process. Yep. They hit send because it's already a nice job form. The technician hits send. It sends them a text right then. And if they don't leave the review right then, it follows up with three emails over the next couple of weeks um, following up with the review. So we ask one, two, three, four, five, seven times, I think, is what we uh, – eight with an automated phone call that comes out a week later too. So we actually ask, end up asking eight times before, um, before we stop trying That's to get a killer. review. That's killer. That's awesome. Uh, because, you know, as I was talking briefly about, um, off air before we started, you know, I'm always stressing from a marketing standpoint and from a lead generation standpoint, get your Google business listing up. It's free to do. Yeah, I might have some tips on how to optimize it and get it to rank over the competition, depending on how that's going. But reviews are so important. Yep. Um, and they're every I'd customer. say they're the most important thing, especially for a new business. But I think they're the most important. 100%. Well, they, they actually help your listing to rank um, mm -hmm. if, if you want to get into the technical side of it. But they also, like, it's just massive massive social proof the more reviews you can have right well yes you got to ask yourself if you're if you're going to shop for something what do you do you type mm -hmm. in what you're looking yeah. for and you see who has the most reviews and then you click on that one that has the most reviews and then you filter it and you look at their worst reviews yeah. and and then you not because you know so if they have 100 reviews and two of them are bad i still want to see the bad ones and like what did they do did they like throw a rock through my window or did they kill my yeah. cat right? yeah and then how did the company <laughs> respond to it if the yeah. company took ownership Mrs. Jones, I'm sorry that we dropped the ball for you. Guess what? I'm going to do business with that company. And um, so we actually started focusing on the reviews on day one. Um, it, we were about three months in. I think we were the second most highest reviewed company um, with, with a roughly 15 or 20 reviews. And then, um, like I said, today, I haven't checked for a week or so, but we have about almost 490 now and we have a 5.0 rating. So uh, the bad news is all my competitors see that. So now there's like two guys that have like 80 reviews out there now, you know, now that we've been doing, doing what we do, but yeah, yeah reviews, A, they're free and B, they're extremely effective. And some people disagree with, disagree with me, but I say a review is more valuable than a referral because a referral gets me one job. Now you could argue it can get you more than one because then the other person might yeah, refer yeah. you. But a review, a referral is gets me mentioned once. A review gets me mentioned to thousands of times every month and forever. So that's uh, an inter interesting perspective. I like it actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's uh, that, you know, for anybody that's listening, if you're a service business owner, this is so so key. Get your Google business listing. You don't need a website. You can link it back to your Facebook page. Um, you know, you just get something up there. It's free get some reviews and, and I like the automation that you put in there as well. Cause it, you know, it just saves you time and, and you have a lot higher success. Well, I'll just add this. I, I'm, I'm the more abrasive guy. You, I think you're the nicer guy. If, um, if you're running your business and you don't have a Google, my business listing, uh, you're kidding yourself and you have a hobby, not a, not a business. Uh, you, you, and it's not because a Google, my business makes it a business all of a sudden it's because you're not even doing the low hanging fruit, easy stuff. 
Yep. Get your Google My Business listing literally on day one. Get it immediately. It takes 20 minutes, if that, 10 yep. minutes to set up. And then every job you do, you ask for the reviews. And I just, guys, I just gave you a lot of reviews. If you just do the part I said, yep. you're going to get a lot of reviews. So. Yep. No, and let's circle around to to talking. You know, you've obviously just dropped a bunch of value, so that people are going to start to kind of see where you're coming from. Talk a bit about the course you have, the YouTube channel, podcast. I always oh, like to yeah. give people a chance to plug what they're up to as well. Yeah. Oh, so I don't have a huge plug. Uh, I will, and thank you for that. But let me. I'll tell you what's cool. Uh, so one thing I did, just it just happened. So I've got this YouTube channel now. Never once in my life did I ever say. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. So if you remember, I got the call, found out I was losing my job. So the next day I'm driving around town, probably, you know, for the next week, I'm just driving around aimlessly and uh, I'm stressed out of my mind. Now, remember my wife's amazing. She'll listen to anything. She's there for me. She gives me support, but we didn't have any friends here. We were new to new to Orlando. And the last thing I wanted to do was come home every day and dump all my fear and anxiety and stress on her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do, but I'm a, I'm an extrovert. You know, I, I do, I don't hold things in. And, you know, if I'm holding them in, it's just because I'm trying not to explode and I don't want to kill you, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> figuratively <laughs> speaking. Figuratively speaking. Um, so anyway, I remember one day I'm driving around and I'm like, well, how am I, I I've got to get this out. I got to get this out. And I thought, you know what, I'm on a journal. I'll just start, start a journal. And then, that idea lasted for about two seconds because I was like, who am I kidding? I don't write stuff. I'm not going to write in a journal. And then, then I thought, well, I guess I could do like a video diary thing and I'll just record videos and then one day I can go back and watch them, you know, and, and I thought that's a great idea. And then I thought, well, shoot, my phone's going to fill up really, really quick. So I thought oh, I'll just upload them to YouTube and I was just going to make it like a private channel and just literally just have this diary of, of my journey. And I ended up like just making it public, just kind of, I just did. And then like, next thing you know, I had like 10 subscribers. So I named it journey of a new entrepreneur because I thought I, I wasn't getting real creative. You know, I was just like yeah. journey yeah. of a new entrepreneur. And, um, and it's not a huge channel. We got, uh, actually probably today I'm going to hit 8,000 subs. So it's not like gigantic awesome. or anything like that, but it's 8,000 more than I thought I would ever have. And, um, so in the, so that the channel, it's actually, I think it's a great resource, especially for new entrepreneurs, because I've made, I've shared the good and the bad. I've even got a playlist on there. I think it's called the dark side of entrepreneurship, I think is what it's called. And it's just like, I, it's not a highlight reel. You know, you're not going to go on my channel and see a highlight reel of, of me bragging about, Hey, I made $10,000 in two hours. Um, a lot of it is me saying, Hey, let me tell you how I sucked today. Or let me tell you about the emotional struggles I'm having today. Or let, you know, and the wins as well. I share tips, I share ideas and stuff like that. I started a podcast of the same name, uh, you know, a year after that and, uh, the podcast. So like the YouTube channel is like my journey. And then the podcast is kind of like my guest's journey. So I bring guests cool. on and we don't talk about, it's kind of like what you and I are doing right now. You know, we don't really talk so much about um, how to run a business, but more like what it's like to run a business. Yeah. And then, um, I had a lot of people kept asking, a lot of people asking me for coaching. And then I think one day I'd like to do that, but I'm just not there today, you know? And, uh, I think maybe I need a little more experience, uh, probably before I do that. And, but I, people kept asking me, so I just made a course. It's called the new entrepreneurs toolkit. And basically it's what we did to grow our business from zero to $20,000 a month. We did it in eight months. Yeah. Um, I could do it over again. I think I could do it in like two or three months, but I learned stuff during the eight months, you know, so, yep. so it was a slow process. And, um, uh, so and that toolkit basically teaches you a few basic things, it teaches you how to get, uh, the phone ringing without a marketing budget. It teaches you how to handle inbound phone calls. It teaches you how to, uh, run model sales appointments. It teaches you how to get high ticket prices. It teaches you how to get a, a crap ton of Google reviews. It teaches you how to uh, get repeat business. And there's one more thing in there. I'm just, I can't even remember right now what it is, but there's like seven <laughs> basic pillars in there. And, um, and then I got a lot of bonus content and there's also downloads. So like if you don't have a big budget, um, instead of going to pay someone, you know, $250 to design, design a professional postcard, I've already done that for you. So I've got uh, multiple designs in there for postcards, for your quote form to help you get your high average ticket prices and all that good stuff. That's all in there for you, for you as well. So this, this could apply to any service business then, right? It's, yeah, it's pretty, not specifically. I think, 
No, yeah. It's, it's, as a matter of fact, it's 100% not a pressure washing thing. Okay. My, my passion isn't pressure washing. Um, so, and when it comes to helping people, like I, I, the last thing I want to be is the pressure washing guy or the window cleaning guy. Um, it's, it's, it's most of this stuff is stuff I learned in the security industry, actually. And, oh, interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah, so if anyone's interested in it, you can go to nobitchzone.com. Nobitchzone.com. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. And, and how much is the course? Uh, so it is eight seventy seven, and um, I when we first launched it, I did a little special on it. Um, I may do something in the future, but right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I mean, that's <laughs> not a lot for someone starting out. Like, And this is something I say to everyone. Uh, I spent... I spent $25,000 on mentors and coaches last year Yep. to get like, it seems like a lot, but I'm seeing the growth now in my business and I'm actually like going full time in this now because of that. Right. Yeah. $800 is not a lot to spend on a course. It's really not. Listen. So guys, let me say this for anyone listening. We'll use my course as an example here since it's what we're talking about, but yeah. this isn't a pitch for me. Okay. This is insert coaching, insert another course, insert whatever. Okay. Yep. Can you be successful without doing them? Yes. You, you do not need my course to be successful and you don't need, you know, that coach over there to be successful. Um, the, but the question that you need to ask yourself and something, a way you need to look at things is the way you need to look at things is not what will something cost me, but what will something make me? And, you know, there's a saying that says amateurs look on the front end uh, professionals look on the back end, meaning a pro doesn't say how much will it cost. He's going to say, what will this make me? Or what's my opportunity loss if I don't do this? Um, the, uh, and then the other thing is like, I've had some people say, Oh, you're crazy that it's 800 bucks. That's fine. I'll be crazy. You, yeah. I, you don't have to take my stuff, but I'm telling you right now, it's not how you're going to make $20,000. That's the, we did that stuff. It got us to 20 K in eight months. I've got guys that are doing it now. They're in like month number three and they're doing that already. But the big thing is, it's like, it's every month and you keep growing. I'm doing all of these things I teach in the course. We're still doing today in our business where we're trying to hit a million dollars this year. So it's yeah. not like, you know, something that doesn't last. So is it, so that's not, I'm not trying to get anyone to buy my thing there. If you want to buy my thing, buy my thing. If you don't, that's fine. No hard feelings. I'll still have a beer with you. But, yeah. uh, but we just like you did last year spending money. You know, I'm, I'm wearing this shirt right here. I don't know. Let's see here. It's called uh, BBB business bourbon and bullshit. I don't know if you Love see it. that. Love this it. is a, it's a mastermind group that I'm a part of, you know, I go four uh, four times a year. Now the, that particular event is not real expensive, but I end up spending about a thousand bucks each time I go. Uh, it's a pretty cheap event, you know, to do something like that. Most events, that. like master, big mastermind events, yeah. are, are definitely going you know, to break the 5K mark. Yeah. So this is, you know, there's about 30 of us that get together. We get a couple Airbnbs and we we workshop our next quarter. And then uh, last year, I, I'm not doing it right now, but last year I was spending $700 a month on a weekly uh, a weekly mastermind group. And yeah. you know, but but then people want to say that you're crazy if you invest in yourselves yet those same people are the ones calling me wanting to know how to grow their business. So, yeah. yeah. yeah and I, I don't know your course. Um, you know, I, I have gotten to know you just by watching you on Facebook and that's why I waited to reach out to you until I kind of thought who you were. Um, I had recommendations from a couple other people I I've gotten to know, but um, I, I went through a few videos on your YouTube channel and you're just, you're basically laying down things that you did wrong mm -hmm. and things that can save people time. And that's, if you can find a good course, yes, there are a lot of people out there hawking courses right now, yep. um, especially yeah. with, with everything that's going on. But I, I've gotten to know Bobby well enough that I know he's he's going <laughs> to, I mean, the, the name of your course is, is pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah. Like you're just going to get in there and tell people to pull the gloves off and get dirty, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the biggest thing with a mentor, a coach, someone who's been there, even if it's not paid, is find someone who's done it and who can direct you. If they and copy them, yeah. Yeah, copy, success leaves clues, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so if you can, you can copy those clues, um, it's going to keep you from making mistakes. It's going to pick you up when you're like, oh, this is really hard because it is a roller coaster, the, the entrepreneurial thing. Um, but you'll, you'll constantly come back to why you're doing it, how to do it, and, and how to succeed at it by, by surrounding yourself with people that have been successful. And, mm -hmm. and you know, whether, the, whether or not they have a course out there or whatever, it, it's, it's immeasurable the, the amount that you can take away yeah. from that. And then, then you got to take action on it, right? Like you can buy as many courses as you want, but if you yeah. don't take action on it, then I think that's why courses. Some may people have a buy, rep. Yeah. Well, some people buy, that's some people, they just like buying the book because they feel smart. 
Yeah. They like reading the book because it inspires them and they feel warm and fuzzy about it or, or the course. And I, I just finished a book today. Uh, do you know who Tommy Mello is? I don't know. I'm running it down right now. Tommy Mello. Yeah. He's, he's actually a pretty phenomenal, uh, business owner. He's pretty young. Um, 30 something. I don't know how old he is, but I'm, I would say he's probably mid thirties. He started a garage door, uh, company and he's now in like four or five States last year did $40 million in top line revenue. Okay. Uh $40 million. And, um, he also has some other businesses as well. And he wrote this book called the, uh, the home service millionaire. So I just, I did it on audible over the last two days here and it was a good book. You know, I was like, I didn't, well, I want to get to my point. So good book. I definitely recommend it, but you get to the very end. So I just listened to this about an hour ago or so you get to the very end and now I'm paraphrasing, but this is pretty much what he said. He goes, listen, I really appreciate you reading my book. Really, I do. But stop reading books and get your ass out there and start implementing. You don't need to read 100 books to be successful. You don't need to read two books to be successful. The reason people win is because they execute. And the, um, well, how about just a big old period at the end of that? The reason people win is because they execute. I, what was the quote that you said? Uh, failure beats what if every time, I think? Is that? Uh, imperfect action beats oh, perfect imperfect action. action. Yeah. yeah. Imperfect action beats per, uh, perfect inaction. And it was, so that was essentially what Tommy said in that book. And what I loved about that book as I was reading it, I didn't hear, he didn't share one thing that was profound. He did share a couple of KPIs that I'm like, okay, I'm going to start tracking these things. But he didn't really share anything minus maybe a couple of KPIs I should be looking at that I haven't heard a dozen times before. What that book did for me, it actually kind of little a little bit of a fire under my ass that I kind of needed right now. Yeah. Because I'm like, you know what? Here's a dude that did $40 million just in his garage door company. God knows what he's done in his other businesses as well. And he's doing it with the simple foundational things that all of us pretty much already know. So yep. what's the difference between me and Tommy minus $40 million? He's doing it. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's it. So you can have the fanciest car in the, in the driveway, but it's not going to take you anywhere until you get in and press the gas pedal, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. You, you just got to get in and, and execute. No, that's, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, any, but I think I actually enjoy going through your channel. I'll be honest. And this is not just because I have you on the show. Um, you know, you had some, I, I actually took away some stuff for, for my business as I, as I start to bring team members on. Um, most of them are remote, just the nature of what I'm doing. Yep. Um, but you have really, really clear videos. Um, I, I actually just had them playing on my other screen here as I was working. I, I forgot they were playing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot they were playing, and I was just like working away, and I was like, it was like an hour later, and I was like, I'm still listening to Bobby. Like, he teaches how to teach us. But basically, um, for, for anyone who's listening, is he, you have you set up a method of teaching your crew um, and it's you out there doing the job um, and, and you, you tell them exactly what you want and exactly uh, when to, when to rinse, you know, don't get the bleach on the grass and don't get the, this and that. Right. Um, and so that kind of inspired me to, to focus more on getting some better systems in place for onboarding people. Right. So, yeah. and, and that's, you know, selfishly, that's why I, I am uh, doing this podcast is for me to glean things from people from all different industries, right? Mm -hmm. We're at the core business is, is ultimately the same game. Um, we all have our unique things that set, set what we're doing apart. Um, but at the core, it's just we're all doing the same thing. We got it sells marketing, deliver the widget. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's, it's all widget widget spraying bleach on shit. Your widget is, is getting leads coming in, you know, but, exactly. but it's the same thing. Yep. Exactly. Um, and so there, there's so much to be learned in, in, I always come back to it, surround yourself with people that are, that are doing the things that you want to do. Um, yep. You're at a level that I'm not at. And, and so, you know, I've, I've gleaned a couple of good things from the conversation that, that I'm going to take away and, and apply. Um, hopefully <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they'll be in there. And, and then the 12th Don't be a bitch, that, man. Don't yeah, be a bitch. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, um, no, I love that, and and I would I would recommend people. I haven't actually checked out your podcast, but I'd like to. It'll it'll, uh, it'll be hitting my my podcast inventory here as well to listen to. I'll tell um, you that if if you're going to my my most recent episode, uh, I interviewed a guy. His name's uh, Brian Lazar, and uh, I think it's Brian or Brandon. I forget. Uh, we're we're best friends, but uh, he's a dude up in Canada. 
Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. The guy up in Canada that has a um, gutter cleaning company. Okay. And he's running 16 trucks, two locations. I think he's 32 years old. Wow. And just and and he's got all the time in the world because he's built this thing right. He's got people running it. Um, it's a good, good episode. So good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I actually told you, but I'm, I'm based in Canada as well. I'm just above the main border. Oh, really? Yeah. He's yeah. over, um, he's on the opposite end. He's, uh, near, uh, I have another, actually I did two Canadian interviews. You're my third Canadian interview. Uh, yeah. I'm on the opposite side here. Um, uh, the reason I met him, I had another guy that lives in, uh, near Surrey. Okay. Yeah. In BC. Yeah. And, um, and then he, they're buddies. These two guys are buddies. So that's how I met the other one who lives about an hour or so from there. So yeah. nice. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, so how do you know, how do you know Sean and them? I know you hop on with him and, uh, and yeah. what's the other guy? In Dan. The, yeah. Dan, Dan Platt. Yeah. So I, I don't know Sean real well. I know Sean, a li- I, I'd consider Sean a buddy, you know, we just haven't got to hang out or interact much, but so Dan Plata is, um, uh, partners with Sean in their recruiting business. So Dan yep. has a, uh, he's partners in a business called blue sky services. So they do bookkeep. He's Dan's my bookkeeper and then, uh, they do recruiting and I think they do some other stuff as well. And, um, so that's how I know Sean. And then like, so Dan is actually in the BBB, this, this nice. mastermind group I was telling you about. And then Dan and I have a mutual partner. So like one of Dan's business partners is my business partner. So we kind of all got to know each other that way. Love it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna reach out to Dan here in the next couple of weeks and, and tell him he's got to come on now because I've had yeah. him and Sean on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dan, Dan's a good one. He'll be a great, great episode for you. I love it. I love it. Um. So, yeah. So we've kind of covered a, a lot of uh, a lot of meat. Um. But let's kind of circle back to your business and and what. Uh, you know, what would you say is the biggest struggle that you faced? And we, we've touched on a few of them, obviously. But what would yeah. Uh, a question I like to ask people is what would you do differently um, if you were to start at day one? Okay. Um, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, get a better hold on my P and L, you know, at the beginning. Um, that's something that I'm doing now. I'm, I'm kind of whipping my P and L into shape. Um, the, uh, I think the things that we did well were focus on sales and marketing. That was our focus from day one. I told my son who was in high school, I said, we did not just start a window cleaning company. We started a sales and marketing company and we just happened to be selling and marketing window cleaning. Um, So we focus on sales and marketing, you know, don't, uh, I'm sure you've read the book, the E-Myth, but so many people that if you haven't, it's a great book by Michael Gerber. Um, I'm halfway through it right now, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, but so many people that are in, especially businesses like ours, service businesses, we, we, they're in it because they're a technician. I I know how to do the thing. So, well, here's the thing, guys. Doing the thing is the easy part. Okay. Striping the sidewalk or striping the parking lot. That's the easy part. Um, Putting the roof on a house. That's the easy part. Cleaning the thing. That's the easy part. Anyone can do that. Um, The reason most people are not successful on scaling their business is because the sales and the marketing side, that's the hard part. You know, that's, that's actually really difficult. And when you, before you say, ah, anyone can do that. Well, then why aren't you, why aren't you doing that? Because it's not fun. Rejection sucks. Right? So something we did well from day one is focus on sales and marketing. I would say my biggest mess has been not controlling my costs. Um, I had to make a change to my uh, pay structure and I actually, I was already paying less than a lot of people I knew like for labor and everything. Um, but I had to make a change in that recently, which fortunately I was able to do that without you know, rocking the boat, but I kind of got lucky on that one. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd say those two things. You know, what, the- uh, what kind of is the biggest, you know, thing that you've focused on for your profit and loss? Well, right now, so labor was the thing that I just kind of got, uh, got under control. So I actually knocked off about 10, 10% off my P and L, uh, because I was, I was overpaying labor about 10%, which is a lot, right? That's a whole okay. lot. Um, how now, many guys do you have on your team? Guys and girls? Uh, well, right now after the Corona thing, there's, uh, five of us total. We had nine just before Corona hit. And then I actually, I fired someone the week before coincident, just 
unrelated, you know, fired someone. So then I didn't replace her because we went into this whole Corona thing. And then I had another guy that was part-time sales that his wife got a job. So he, he's a firefighter. So he, he quit, you know, on good terms. And, um, and then I had to lay a couple guys off at that point. So right now we're at five total, including me. Um, but so labor was the first thing. So the next thing I'm, I'm digging into is just basically trying to control, uh, my cogs, you know, cost of goods sold with, uh, my, um, like in my business, a lot of that's coming from our chemical costs and stuff like yep. that. Yep. And I don't think I can make a huge impact in cogs, but I think I can probably knock off uh, two to three percent there and with that again, just a sourcing game basically actually that's not even that i'll be able to help there uh I, I don't have a facility that allows me to keep stuff in bulk right now but yep. uh but we're we're actually next week we're going to be changing a process one of our processes on how we do some cleaning i think it's going to help us out on the cogs thing um one of the reasons now another thing with me my pnl is really tight uh like in a tight in a bad way um because of our aggressive growth. So, um, I spent a whole lot on marketing, but the plan yep. is we're, we're getting the business to a, um, um, to a, um, we're, we're trying to accumulate as many customers as possible, even at a high acquisition rate. And then, uh, probably here in about another year, year and a half, we'll, we'll have this huge database of people that are already using this and then add services to it. So then, then we can add a service, and then we have virtually no marketing expense because we have this big database of people that already love us and use us. So. Yeah. As, as you know, someone in who's doing one tiny little sliver of, of a way to market, what do you use as marketing and what do you find is kind of the best thing for that has worked for you? Uh, our number one source right now is AdWords. So AdWords okay. has been phenomenal for us. Um, but, and we're in a good market for it. I think there's probably markets that it's not the best and that would be like, smaller rural areas probably won't perform as well as a metro area like Orlando. Yeah. But AdWords has been huge, um, continues to be, uh, flyers have been really, really good for us. You know, I know, I know several people in the pressure washing industry that are doing really well with flyers. Yep. Yeah. Flyers are really, really good. Um, we actually, uh, now that our company's maturing, uh, are getting, becoming more mature, I should say we, uh, we're getting a lot more repeat work and a lot more referrals, you know, nice. just because we have more and more people out there and we have our follow-up systems in place and all that good stuff. You basically got to get the <coughs> critical mass of, of a customer base and then it's, it turns into a snowball and it, it starts exactly. propagating yeah. for you. Yeah. So That's those awesome. are the main things. Uh, now our client flyers, like we transferred from doing regular flyers to a thing called clip flyers. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you know what those are, which basically it's, you take a door hanger, fold it in half, throw a big metal office clip on it. And then you like deliver them like newspapers, throwing them on the, driveway instead of uh placing them in the mailbox yeah yeah no it's uh it's kind of i just learned about it maybe three weeks ago i saw someone uh who was saying they were doing really well for him he was just driving he was doing a live video as he's driving just like tossing it out of his truck yep. Yep. yeah that's awesome very cool well i mean i think we've got i think we've got some good value in here is there anything else um that that we haven't touched on of what you're doing that you'd like to chat about yeah uh, you know i'll just say this anyone listening um you know, I mean, I get a lot of people that reach out to me, but I love making connections and stuff. Hit me up on Facebook, you know, Bobby Walker. If, um, the, you know, if you want to learn something from me, go to the YouTube channel. Uh, you know, that's kind of how I've, I've systemized myself, you know, in that because I throw stuff on there. But, uh, you know, hit me up, say hi, tell me you heard me on the show. I'd love to connect with you. And um, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Nobitchzone.com. Go check it out. I love it. Perfect. And uh, I, I usually get, you know, people to to tell one like big nugget before they before we kind of sign off mm-hmm. here what would be someone who's this would be directed at someone who's kind of in the first year of business maybe they haven't even gone full time in it um but they're they want to but they're you know they haven't taken that leap they haven't uh they haven't jumped through the hoop yet so i'm gonna kind of, i'm gonna cheat and kind of go back to something i've already said because well, i think i've I think I've already kind of laid out the most important things and and you said it too, you know, like the imperfect action beats perfect in action. So, um, I don't, do you know a guy named Brandon Vaughn by chance? I've heard of him. I don't know him. I I don't know too much about him. Very successful guy before he got out of his, um, pressure washing company, they did about $4 million in his last year. And, um, he, uh, 
when he took it over, it was a window cleaning company. His dad ran for 20 years. It was doing hundred K a year and he grew it in about six or seven years to doing about 4 million. He, um, he has this little thing he likes to say is he goes, you got to stop lying to yourself and lie L I E stands for lacking in execution. Um, so guys, you, you got to look in the mirror. You got to be honest. Don't say you're big boned because you're not, you're overweight. Okay. You're fat. Uh, be honest when you look in there, look for the imperfections, work on the things uh, that need to be fixed. And sometimes working on them means you outsource it. Sometimes it's who, not how. Sometimes you find someone else to do the thing that you're weak at. Other times you've got to fix that thing and make it happen. And if your problem is, I just can't get enough jobs, I can't get enough work. Well, let me ask you, did you spend more time in the garage tinkering on the equipment? Did you spend more time fake marketing because you think you're, you're tweaking your website just right? Or did you get your ass out there and just keep pushing until you've got a yes? You know, keep pushing until people can't tell you no anymore. So I, the biggest nugget is stop lying to yourself. Don't lack in execution. That, that, that's trademarked by Brandon Vaughn. But, uh, and, and, and make it happen. That's it. I love it. I, there's, there's nothing really else that people need to do. I mean, that, that covers the whole business world is get out there, do something, make something happen. Right. Yeah. Awesome. This is, this has been really fun for me. Um, great to, great to meet you and and get to know you a bit more. Um, usually what I do is we'll just pop off air here and and wrap up and then, uh, we'll go on our way, but really appreciate you coming on Bobby. And and I think that uh, people will get some, some good value out of this. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. Awesome. Cheers.